Are you looking for a beginner chemistry unit for your fifth through eighth graders? Well, today I want to review for you the beginning chemistry from the good and the beautiful. Hey guys, it's Fani from Mrs. Mom's Homeschool and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm a homeschooling mom. I have three children and I do videos on homeschool day in the lives, curriculum reviews, and everything to help you on your homeschooling journey. If you're a new homeschooler, make sure you check out my playlist for new homeschoolers. I'll leave it in the card above. Today I'm going to review for you the Good and the Beautiful's beginning chemistry unit and I'm going to show you briefly how I put my Good and the Beautiful science unit. So here is the Good and the Beautiful beginning chemistry. So I also told you that I was going to show you how I store my unit so i hole punch them i buy them printed already and then i hole punch them and i put them in a one inch binder and i just label them here on the side i put the vocabulary words here if there's a side pocket because those vocabulary words will eventually go up on my science wall like this and once they're up on the science wall they're going to stay there the whole unit so this beginning chemistry and the scientific method is a unit study for grades five through eight. It teaches an introduction to chemistry, the scientific method, scientific measurement, states of matter, phase transitions, elements, atoms, and molecules, chemical and physical properties, identifying chemical changes, elements, and the periodic table, the atom, molecules, compounds, and chemical bonding, conservation of mass, mixtures and pure substances, and properties of water. And there are all, there's also a section that says featured elements. So if you're not familiar with the good and the beautiful science, they have a bunch of different units. They have units like marine biology, arthropods, energy, human body, water in our world, safety, and lots more. So I'll link their website in the description below. So at the beginning of each course, you have your unit information. It tells you how to prepare a journal for your child, how to prepare a science wall, how to set up the mini books, any lesson preparation, and what to do if you're teaching children, older children, like in grades seventh and eighth. You also have a supplies needed page, which tells you every lesson and all the supplies that are gonna be needed for that lesson. Because this is a very hands-on science and there's lots of labs as you can see especially in this unit there's lots of hands-on activities you also have optional read alouds for each lesson it tells you if the book is fiction or nonfiction, if it's a biography and it tells you what age range that it's for so women in chemistry is a book what is the scientific method what is the world made of so there's different books to go with each different lesson then I'm just going to show you how the lessons are laid out. So here up here for lesson number one, you have an introduction to chemistry. You're always going to have your main objective for the lesson, anything you need to do to prepare for the lesson, any supplies that are needed for the lesson, and you have check marks to check everything off. So if you're a checkbox person like I am, this is the perfect science for you. You have an optional, you have time to read, do an optional read aloud, and then it tells you exactly what to read to the children when to pause for answers and what the answers could be. You also have your vocabulary words. It gives you the words to put up on your wall and it asks you to put it up at that time. I like to put all of mine up at the wall, on the wall in the beginning before I even start the lesson and then I just have my children look up at the science wall and read me the definitions. That way my science wall is pretty from lesson one. It tells you more things to read to the child and then you have all of your activities. So for this one, you have chemistry questions for your activity. Then you have a jump back in history activity. Then you have a vocabulary word. And then you have an experiment. There's also, in this specific lesson, quote discussion. There's a quote here and gives you opportunity to talk to your children about what that quote means. And then you have a summary of the lesson, asking the kids, like, narration like the Charlotte Mason style. And then for older children, there's lesson extension. So if you have seventh and eighth graders, they have to do uh, the extra lesson. They should do the extra lesson, which could, which, you know, it could be research, it could be something else. So whenever you have a, an experiment, you have all the papers that you need 
for your experiment. Here you see information, hypothesis, and it has all these blank boxes to write different things in. It explains what hypothesis means. And this is for the lab notebook. So if their lab notebook is a binder, they can just, you can photocopy this and have them fill it out and then put it into their binders. Now notes during my experiment, and then here's the experimental form here. And then here are the instructions for that first experiment. There's always nice pictures in this unit and all the science units. So what I also do is I like to have page protectors after every lesson and I slide in anything that needs to be cut out for that lesson or anything I'm going to put up in my science wall. So here there's some cutouts for chemistry questions. Important people in chemistry that need to be cut out. These are all the activities for lesson one that I just told you that they were going to have activities. And then on the other side we have the lesson two activity. So this here is a mini book and you would cut it here and put it together and it becomes a mini book. And they always have a handful of mini books inside the lessons. This one is based on the scientific method. So each little page tells a different step of the scientific method with lots of colorful pictures. So in essence, that is the science unit. I'm just gonna scroll through here. I'm not scroll, but turn the pages so you guys can see a little bit of what else is here. Per Personal protective equipment used by scientists, a scientific method cutout. So these are more activities, lab safety rules, some more lessons. More f papers that they're gonna be looking through, lab sheets for their notebooks. Ideas for investigation of me measurements. You have, these are the types of things that I like to put up on my science wall. Here's another mini book about the phases, about the phase changes of matter. You can see how it's geared towards, towards grades fifth and up whereas lots of the other units are geared towards K and up. You can always put all these pages up on your science wall if you have a big one like I do. And that's it. It's all laid out that way. You have all your different experiments here. Freezing point of water. Let me show you the pictures of the experiments. Expanding water experiment. Another mini book. Okay, observing density. Calculating volume and density. You have a little bit of math in there. Another mini book. Periodic table. Elephant toothpaste experiment. Learning about the periodic table. Usborne has a great periodic table book that can pair along well with this. More cutouts and things like that. Okay, so there are, this is your featured elements section. Gives you a look into all of the elements. Well, not all of the elements, but the featured elements. So there's 14 lessons in this, and if you're doing two lessons a week, you can finish this in seven weeks. You could do five lessons a week and get it done faster. It's really up to you. They recommend the science be done twice a week in homeschooling period. Usually you do science twice a week and then history twice a week, but it's all up to you. So that's it.